Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and in today's video we're going to be going over current relays and how they work. Thank you to everyone tuning in to Jumper Man Tech. In today's lesson we're going to be going over current relays and how they work. Just a heads up if you find this video interesting or helpful Please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And let's get straight into it. Current relays are used on single phase fractional horsepower motors requiring low starting torque. Their main function is to assist in starting the motor. Start and run capacitors can be used in conjunction with current relays to boost both starting and running torque. Current relays are quite simple. They consist of a low resistance coil and a set of normally open contacts. Right here is the current relay itself, and as you can see, it is attached directly to the compressor terminals, specifically your start and your run winding. You can simply just pull it off. Let's begin by examining the relay itself. As we mentioned earlier, it consists of a low resistance coil and a set of normally open contacts. Contacts are built inside, you will not see that but we could clearly see the coil right here. If we turn the relay around, we're gonna notice two female connections. These connections here get connected directly to the terminals or your pins on your compressor, specifically your run and start windings. They're gonna be labeled as M and S. S is gonna be your start and M, they call it the main winding, is going to get connected to your run winding. So M is your run winding, S is your start winding. If we look closely at the coil, one side of the coil right here really doesn't go anywhere, but then you have an entrance on this side, and this is going to be labeled as L. This is going to be your power coming in your line. This one hasn't labeled, so I labeled it for you guys. Line, main, start. And then this could also be known as your one terminal. Then we have, could have a two terminal right here. So power comes in through line. Then we have two female connections here. Your main winding, which is your run. S winding, which is your start. And terminal two, one, two. All right. Here we have a diagram consisting of our power source, our current relay and our compressor. Let's go over exactly what we're looking at. So L1 is gonna be our line one, and L2 is gonna be our line two. Here we have our relay. We have our L, M, and S point. We also have a one point. Sometimes the numbering on these changes, so it's important to go with the exact current relay that you have, but what is most important, which every single one does have, is these three points, your line, M, and S. So it's very important to take into account those three. Everything else can vary. You can have one terminal, two, even three terminals. So go by the current relay that you have, but what will be universal is L, M, and S. So here's our current relay. Here we have a start capacitor, which is in series with your start winding. So, like we said, power's in, goes to line. Here we have our coil in between. M is our main winding, goes to your run winding on your compressor. This is the compressor. S goes to the start winding on your compressor. Here is your common winding on your compressor. And here we have a overload, specifically a thermal overload, which is a normally closed safety device. So the compressor overheats, this opens, kills the power to the compressor, and you get a phone call on a Saturday morning. <laughs> so let's go over how this works. Remember, we have a coil and a set of normally open contacts, which is different than the previous video I just made on potential relays where we do have a coil but it is a set of normally closed contacts and there are differences. I'm gonna make a video on the difference between a current relay and a potential relay along with a basic 
control relay. So let's go over this. Power comes in to L on our current relay. It's going to try to go here, but it's not going to allow us to go. We have a normally open set of contacts, so it's going to have no effect because power does distribute. But let's go over how this works. So power comes in to L on the current relay. It's going to go through our coil and then to our M terminal, which is our main winding, our main terminal, which goes to our run winding. It's going to go through. What's going to happen, and it's going to complete the circuit, but what it's going to happen is that we're going to have something called locked rotor, where we're going to have an extremely high amperage. This amperage is going to cause a magnetic field across this coil, right? Power is going to go through. And what's going to happen is with that high amperage through the lock rotor, it's going to create a magnetic field and close this contact right here. Our normally open contact will close. So now power is going to go through here. At the same time, it's going to come down, go through our start capacitor. Through the start capacitor, right, since this is closed now, it's not going to pass through and go through the start winding and it's going to complete the circuit. As the compressor reaches about three-fourths of its speed, the amp draw is going to go down. We're not going to longer, no longer have locked rotor. So because of that amperage coming down, you know, we're going to decrease that magnetic field and it's going to open these contacts once again and essentially take this out of the circuit our start capacitor and or winding and we're just pretty much just going to run through our main winding the run winding and we continue to cool and run and there you have it ladies and gentlemen that is how a current relay works quick recap power is going to come in through line one into l on the current relay go through the coil and out through your M terminal, which is your run winding, complete the circuit. From there, we're gonna have locked rotor, which is gonna be a large increase in amperage. This amperage is gonna create a magnetic field and close your normally open contacts, which will allow the start capacitor and start winding to enter the circuit. Once this happens, your amperage is gonna decrease, and that decrease in amperage is gonna weaken that magnetic field and open those contacts once again so now your start capacitor is out of your circuit and essentially your start winding it drops out of your circuit and it just continues to run through your main winding which is your run winding and there you go you now have air conditioning and or refrigeration if anyone found this video interesting or helpful Please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.